Welcome, welcome, beloved community. We are back again with yet another installment of the People's Water Board Coalition's Water Wednesdays webcast. And today is just me and my beloved co-host, Valerie Jean. Hi, everyone. And we're here to talk to you about some important upcoming bills and legislation around water. But before we get to that, I'd like to ask everyone, all of our viewers, how they're doing since the polar vortex has hit. That's um, right. I know many uh, people, this storm that came this weekend past were without power, including myself and Valerie Jean. And uh, we didn't have power for a couple of days. I'm pretty sure that a lot of people probably did like you, Valerie and Gina, left their homes. Um, I wasn't fortunate enough to have the capacity to do that because people tend to break into homes over here in my neighborhoods. But I did send, like, the small children and my daughter away so that they were safe. Um, so many people were dis displaced. So many people. And because they're without power... Um, Right now, thousands of people have frozen pipes and are without water. Um, and that's, that's really... I was going to get to next. Yeah, it's yeah. very frightening. <laughs> it's worse enough to not have heat and access to electricity. But because of that happening, having no access to water, because of your pipes freezing, which could lead to a whole plethora of new issues, because if any of those burst because they're frozen, then you have to get a complete pipe repair. Yeah, and most people can't afford it. <laughs> having your pipes exactly. repaired um, and the damage of having a pipe break, like if, you know, water spews everywhere or whatever, like whatever that looks like. Um, people are just barely making their ends meet. Um, it could be, they could be weeks without water because of their pipes yeah. freezing. You know, we talk a lot about climate change and things like this. We had a really, really mild winter, and then it all came on all at once. Um, the first polar vortex I saw was in 2013, winter of 2013, 2014. Yeah. Um, and when our pipes froze, it took us weeks to get our water turned back on. It was a huge problem. Um, and it was only because my husband knew how to do the repairs that we actually got it done. If yeah. we had to actually pay a plumber, there's we would have never. It would have been weeks and weeks without water. But being without electricity, being not able to cook without water, we know everybody's going through it. And then your 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 family are homeowners as well. But then imagine being a renter like myself and having to rely on the property owner to make the repairs. And, and a lot of times not he's one. not he's not making like urgent moves. He's not yeah. like actually caring that what you're going through. Exactly. Um, you know, or when we, when we a think a lot of property owners that rent out properties and really they can't afford in general to be a landlord, but it's how they're trying to create stable income for their family. And then it gets even worse if something like that were to occur. Yeah. Yeah, everybody all the way around is um, suffers when things like this happen, and especially with the temperatures so low. I mean, yesterday we were below two. Um, yeah. And I had to go to the hospital with my husband. He has um, a knee surgery coming up. And just people were in the hospital. You could tell that people were in the hospital trying to stay warm. That there yeah. was so many, so many people that have been displaced. And they were trying to figure out, you know, what it looks like to chill in the hospital lobby. Um, that part was really uh, tragic uh, yeah, to hear it, that to to hear people um, going through that. Like, we need to find somewhere safe and somewhere warm because we don't have electricity. That was, you know, that's the situation when when things like these happen. People really do make decisions um, that are really really hard for them and their families. And uh, we just really hope, the Water Wednesday team really hope that all of our listeners are making it through, uh, looking out for each other. If you have the means to look out for somebody else, please do. Absolutely. Please. Um, those were probably people that had medical insurance. They were trying to find some place to stay warm because their house was without uh, basic utilities. I just, I think 
that even in that situation, it could be worse because we could be complete housing insecure people. I mean, that's the thing is, you know, people who um, didn't have anywhere to go. Yeah. They filled the hospitals too. Yeah. I can guarantee it. It's tragic. In this system, in the country, in this country with this kind of wealth, there yeah. should be nobody outside in the freezing cold. There um, shouldn't be. Just like if we can literally take an eighth of our war economy and eradicate poverty, homelessness, and those issues in this country, and it's so sad to know that that's the choice to our the choices that are made, people. Oh, at the lowest level, like just us regular people always think, oh, people are in this situation because they didn't do this and they didn't do that. They didn't budget. And they don't realize that like our government. People go through something. stuff. They seriously go through stuff. Come on. They right? do. Our government <laughs> could eradicate all of those issues, but they choose to. Fund war and kill fund people. Fund war and then do. Uh, Make weapons make weapons, fund war, and then offer relief to foreign countries before they take care of their home country. And that's just, that, that mind boggles me. You know, I'm not overly spiritual or religious, but I will say this. This com- country was bought up, brought up on Christian practices. And in the Bible, it says that you take care of home first. You get your house in order first. So how are we helping all these other countries with resources in their time of need, but we can't take care of our own countrymen in their time of need? It's really sad and appalling. Um, And the thing is, is that um, in this time of year especially, it could have utterly, utterly devastating consequences. I mean, that's the situation. People are dying, guaranteed. Yeah. People, yeah. Those hospitals are Absolutely. filled with people who um, who have been outside and and uh, and and not doing okay. They're not okay. Um, we want to uh, extend our hearts and our love to you all, and um, look out for each other. We also wanted to talk about the water for the Michigan water affordability bills package. Um, yeah. that has been introduced by Stephanie Chang and a handful of other um, lawmakers. And in it, there is plumbing repair. So it actually is really important to this moment um, that these bills get passed because people are going to have a hard time fixing their pipes after a polar vortex. And a yeah. lot of people will go with water because will go without water because of that. So we wanted to talk about the summary of the the bill summary very quickly with you all and then give you a actionable thing that we need you to do right now and tell all of your neighbors, your community, your family and ask them to do it, too, because getting this water affordability bills package passed is going to save lives throughout Michigan. It's going to save lives, especially in moments like this where people are in such dire situations. Very, very important. So here is a summary of what the bills are, um, how important they are, just very quickly, and then we've got an action item for you at the end. So the affordability program, it was, a, the, it was introduced by Stephanie Chang and a handful of other Michigan lawmakers. Um, these bills create a low-income residential water supply affordability program within the Michigan Department of Health and Human Services. So that eligible low-income residents can pay water bills that do not exceed 3% of their household's income. They establish establish two eligibility tiers, water customers at or below 135% of the federal poverty level and customers from 136% to 200% of the federal poverty line. Existing water affordability programs can continue. Um, it is it's going to be carrying out carried out through uh, community action agencies, United Way groups, the same way that LIWAP and other um, uh, utility programs are carried out. Um, the three percent cap will be done with credits, 
and discounts um, and other rate reductions. In addition to the 3% of the income cap on water affordability bills, the program also allows for arrearage payments and customer accounts and funds, funds for plumbing repairs. To bring down the cost of water bills from leaks, which also supports water conservation, which were really, which is all really important. Um, yeah. So these these bills kind of do it all. It creates a, a way for Michigan residents throughout the entire state to um, to not have their water shut off. It also, which I think you want to talk about, you want to talk about the decriminalization of it, right? Yes. But before I say that, I want to just let our viewers know that when we say 3%, we mean 3% of your annual income. Thank you. Yeah. And I just want to say that, like, the decriminalization bill, which is part of this packet, is vital. Because right now, yeah. per chance, if your water is disconnected and you find a way to restore your water quote unquote without permission. Turn it back on yourself. Yep. Turn it back on. You are facing a five year felony if caught. Yeah. Decriminalization then, is so important. To decriminalize the, the decriminalization is vital because what we cannot have on top of already all these other issues that many people who fall into the low income uh group face on a daily basis, and I'm sure all our viewers out there, especially those that are low income, understand exactly what I'm getting at, Yeah, is that some of you may be the only breadwinner for the household. Just imagine that chain reaction if your water is turned off. First of all, we already know if your water is turned off, that's grounds for removal of your children, your minor children. That's right. So now you're dealing with CPS in the foster care system. Also, if by chance you receive DHS benefits, when your kids are removed, you're gonna your benefits are gonna stop too. Even if it's temporary. And then on top of that, if your water gets cut off and to make sure that this doesn't happen, that you don't lose your children, you don't lose your source of income or that you're still able to have water in your house so you can go to work and you turn it back on, you can get charged with a five-year felony. And what this bill is doing is saying that no one should go to jail or prison because they tried to restore a life-giving necessity. That's right. That you, at the most, it should be a citation, you know, which, you know, you may have to pay it. Maybe you can get it waived. But it's still better than going to prison, especially right. in light of if you go back and look at one of our previous shows about what's going on in Michigan prisons and jail systems. It's yeah, they don't have clean water. And they don't care if you have clean water. They don't care if you have water, period. No, you they do not. You literally jump out the frying pan <laughs> into the fire. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we saw it in Flint, right? When yes. during the Flint water crisis, they did not give the prisoners. We had to protest for a month straight outside of the jail in Flint mm -hmm. for them to even consider giving them three bottles of water a day. Yeah. So during the crisis, those so jails do not water. care. No. Yeah. Yeah. All the way around, you're cut off from decent water, right? From a you safe, know, affordable honestly, water. I've been arrested before. You know, protesters tend to, to get arrested. And I've always been iffy about the water system in jails anyway, because literally your toilet and sink are together. Yeah. Yeah. And that's where you're, you know, I said, well, where does the water recycle? Like, I, I've i always been very iffy about that. Yeah. Um, we, I mean, we're going to probably have to save the policing in prison um, <laughs> conversation for another day, but it's true. Absolutely. I mean, like, it's, it really is. Um, you, they don't care if you have clean, they affordable, they if, they have, if you have clean water at all. And I think most people that fall into the low income category have already experienced enough of people not caring about what happens to them. You That's know, as right. I always say, I feel like they think we're indispensable, like we're mm -hmm. dispensable, like we're throwaway. Like, yeah. you know, we don't, our lives don't matter, but our lives are some of the most important being low income people particularly low-income people of color, 
because right. we are always the hardest hit, the first on the front line when something devastating happens to the community. Always. You know? Like, always. for instance, like, literally, I we were talking about the power outage a few moments ago, and I remember when the power outage happened for we still haven't figured out what caused it in August. And literally, you could look on the news and they were breaking their necks to get trucks out to Farmington and trucks out to Bloomfield to get their power restored immediately. Like literally saying We were out for four days. And we were out for four days. Yeah. You know, the um there's something that all of us can do though to push these bills. Um Yes. And that is to call your representatives. Uh, you, where the, there's going to be in the description box down below for a petition for you to sign um, and ways for you to speak up. But uh, we specifically want people to go and sign the petition that's down below in the description box um, to Representative Tate. Um, because apparently he's riding the fence on this water affordability legislation. Yeah. And we need him to step up. We need him to make sure that every Michigan um, resident has safe, affordable water. We need him to step up. So that's your action item today. We're asking you to go to the description box, click on that, and sign that petition. Please share this um, with your family and community. Have this conversation with your family and community. This water affordability legislation is going to save lives all the way around. There's no other way of looking at it. If you hear somebody talking bad about it, it's because they haven't read the bills. They have not actually read the summary of the bills or the bills. Um, You just have to actually do that for yourself. So the summary of the bills and where you can look at the bills is all going to be in the description box down below. Please sign that petition. Please educate yourself so that you're able to talk to your family and community about it. Absolutely. I completely agree. And I just want to say to our viewers out there that please understand when we say this, this is not a Detroit issue. This is not a black issue. This is not a poverty issue. This is not a rich issue, a white issue. This is a human issue. If these bills don't pass, there will be people across the entire state from the depths of the hood into Detroit to the most ruralist of areas in the UP that will be in jeopardy of not having access to clean, affordable, potable drinking water and sanitation. This includes people that have wells. This includes people that think that they can afford to have water. It will become a battle of whether anyone in Michigan will have access to clean, affordable water. That's right. And this is a issue. It will co- it will come, if these bills don't pass, it will literally come down to the point where the only people that will have access to clean water will be the very rich and the people that own companies because they get the commercial rates. Residential rates will be, residential customers will be taking a hit like no other and we can't allow that people i mean let's 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 look at our state we're a mitten that means all four of our fingers are sticking together in one side and the only thing that's loose is a thumb we have to remember that we're that palm we have to stick together and help anything that we can do to help all of us across michigan we all have to work on it and this petition, it's, our du- it's our duty, too, to make sure duty. that each other have their basic needs. It's up to yes. us to demand yes. that from a system that is fine with them not having basic needs. Exactly. It's up to us to do that. It is on us. Nobody's yeah. coming to save us. Nobody. No. These bills are a cushion and we need it. And That's this petition it. that we're requesting is very simple. You don't have to give, you know, your your... You it's know, just signing petition, history, calling you just your give representatives. your signature, your zip code, and that's it. And you're on the petition. Yeah. It's not, Please they're share. not asking for everything about your personal information. It's a very simple petition that can do so much and be so impactful on the decisions that are going everybody's to be Everybody's lives. Yeah. On everybody. So impactful on everybody's yeah. lives. And, and the, um, the, the quality of their lives. 
people who don't have safe, affordable water, they don't have a good quality of life. We have to make sure that we fight and that we get this passed. So yeah. everybody go to the description box. It's going to take three minutes of your time. And then, yeah, yeah if that, to sign the petition, but also call your representative. Um, talk to them specifically about it. Even if they're already supporting the bill, the representatives, you know, they really want to hear that their constituents appreciate what they're doing. So yeah. even their representatives are already supporting the bills, but definitely the ones who are not. They have to hear from you. They have to hear from us in mass. They have Particularly to. Particularly if we have any viewers in Macomb County, we ask that you really push to talk to your representatives, um, talk to your local officials, and sign the petition. Because right now, Candace Miller is trying to say that Macomb County as a whole should have an opt-out. And we know that there are people in Macomb County that are they dealing this with water issues. They need this legislation as well. No that's one's right. that To all of our viewers, we appreciate you for tuning in every week. On February 3rd, I have a photography exhibit that has everything to do with the Detroit water shutoffs, the shutdown line five movement, and all kinds of uh, water movements in, Detroit, in, in Michigan and around the country. Um, it's a beautiful photo exhibit. Uh, I've been photographing of the water movement here in Michigan for the last 13 years. And I would love for you all to come on February 3rd to the Grace and James Lee Boggs Center for Community Leadership um, at the Gallery of Revolution <laughs> um, and come to my show. It's from two to four. Look out for on our um, on all of our social media. We'll be doing uh, updates on that so that you'll have you know, you can keep abreast of it. But I would love for all of you to come and see my photo exhibit um, and and you know, show support for that. Thank you so much. And times are hard, my friends. Look out for each other, call each other, uh, try to stay warm, um, and try to stay afloat. Until next time. Bye. Bye. Be careful, homie, you spilling it.